now we will be discussing the second part of the antibody where we'll be discussing all the different types of antibody this is a very factual topic and uh, examiners generally ask a short notes from this topic they will generally give to write a short note over igg or iga or uh, for that matter igd okay so they, they can ask uh, such type of questions and uh, uh, that you can write only if you remember some of the important uh, features of all those antibodies so we will try to remember all those facts uh, about all those antibodies uh, uh, in a tabular manner so that it we can retain it for a longer time okay so uh, let's start so first we will see different properties that is the usual form valency that different types of chains present then subclasses then daily production rate then half life and similarly different uh, things we will be seeing all together so the usual form in case of igg is monomeric while in case of iga it is monomer it can present as monomer or dimer then igm is either monomer or pentamer that means five igm molecules will be present together then monomer igd is a monomer and ig is a monomer so come to the valency valency means uh, the you know the number of antigens that the antibody can bind so in any one antibody there are two antibody binding sites so valency will be two generally so igd has two valency iga since can be uh, available in dimeric form also so the valency may become two or may become four based on the form of the antibody similarly the valency of igm can be two or ten if it is present in the pentameric form and the valency of igd and ige are two and two now come to the chains so we have got the heavy chains and the light chains so heavy chain in case of igg will be gamma chain in case of iga it will be alpha chain then in case of uh, igm it will be mu chain then in case of igd it can it, it will be delta chain and in case of uh, e chain there will ige antibody it will be a epsilon chain okay epsilon chain then light chains can be either kappa or delta in all the antibodies so light chain is never all together both cannot be present together so it it is either kappa light chain or the del uh, i mean lambda light chain okay then come to the subclasses so igg antibody has got four subclasses the iga ig uh, igg1 igg2 3 and 4 similarly iga has got two subclasses the iga1 and iga2 while all other antibodies has got no subclasses so none none and none no subclasses are present now co come to the daily production rate daily production in milligram per kg so igg uh, ka production hota hai at the rate of 34 milligram per kg and then iga a uh, production is 24 milligram per kg body weight igm daily production is 3.3 and igd 0.4 and ige is 0.002 okay then half life is 23 days for igg then iga for iga it is 6 days for igm it is 5 days then for igd it is 3 days and for ige it is 2.5 this is totally factual thing you have to mug it up uh, there is nothing i can do it uh, for you all okay so please mug it up because they generally ask the short notes over these specific antibodies so you will be able to write only if you remember all those facts okay then serum level serum level is uh, in milligram per ml so it is uh, 9 to 12 in case of igd it is 3 in case of iga in case of uh, igm it is 1.5 igd 0.03 and for ig it is 0.0003 then come to the now if you uh, see one thing that there is a trend there is a trend in all of these three things there is a trend what is the trend the trend is that it is going in a decreasing way it is going in a decreasing way everything is going in a decreasing way so please remember in this way this is all i can do that i can simplify it to a certain extent so if you write gum de gum de g a m d e this is the sequence of the antibodies so in this sequence in this sequence from g to e gum in gum de there is a gradual decrease in the daily production gradual decrease in the half life and gradual decrease in the serum level okay so this may slightly help you in remembering 
okay now come to the sedimentation coefficient so sedimentation for ig g is 7s then for ig a is 7s for igm is 19s and for ig d is 7s and for e is 8s why is why it is 19s for igm because it has got total pentameric form now so by that you can remember that has 19s sedimentation coefficient for igm now molecular weight in kilo dalton is for igg the molecular weight is 150 for iga it is 150 kilo dalton for igm it is 900 kilo dalton and for igd it is 150 kilo dalton and for ige it is 190 kilo dalton now whenever they ask you to write a short note over the antibodies you must draw the diagram of the antibody that i have drawn in the first part of the antibody lecture okay there i have clear made a clear diagram of the antibody and labeled it also so you, you should always make the diagram of the antibody whenever it is asked if they ask you the iga antibody then you have to make the dimeric form of the antibody dimeric form of the antibody that somewhat looks like this this is one antibody and this is the second antibody they are joined together by the j chain and the secretory component okay so uh, you have to make this diagram if they ask you about the ig a antibody if they ask you about iga antibody you have to make this diagram and you have to label also like j chain secretory components etc that should be labeled and if they ask you about igm antibody then you have to make a pentameric diagram okay a diagram of the pentameric antibody and you have to show the j chain over there so that's all about the different features of the antibodies now come to the you have to write the functions also of different antibodies so the function of uh, the igg antibody is that uh, since igg antibody can cross the placenta so it provides immunity to the fetus so it has a very important role in providing the immunity to the fetus then when we will be coming to the complement system then we will read that there are three pathways of complement activation one of which is the classical pathway so igg antibody help in the classical pathway of complement system then opsonization it helps in opsonization also we will see what is opsonization then igg is raised in chronic infection and subsequent exposures like we have seen in case of the secondary immune response there is rise in the igg level igg type of antibody while in case of primary immune response there was igm rise okay so that is the variation in the antibody type of antibody depending upon the exposure also okay now come to the iga antibody now since iga can be available in two forms one is the iga uh, i mean one is the monomeric form and the other one the dimeric form so the uh, two types of antibodies are there and uh, two types of iga are there there that is the serum iga that is uh, helping in the antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity this we will learn about this in detail when we will be reading the immune response chapter okay so in the immune response chapter we will be discuss it in detail then we have secretory iga antibody that is present in the intestinal lining of and the respiratory tract mucosa okay this provides the local and the mucosal immunity and prevents the entry of the pathogen to the mucosa so these are the two functions of the igg the serum igg is helping us in the adcc while the secretory iga is helping us in the local and the mucosal immunity then come to the igm antibody how is that helpful to us so igm antibody is the first antibody in the primary immune response we have seen this in the uh, in our acquired immunity chapter okay in the second part of the acquired immunity chapter then this igm uh, is also helpful in the classical complement pathway activation then IgM is also present as the B cell receptor over the B cells. Then it helps in opsonization also. And then it protects against the intravascular microorganisms. Okay, it protects against the intravascular microorganisms. Then what is the importance of IgD? The main importance of IgD is that it acts as the B cell receptor. Okay, so it is present over the B cells and acts as the receptor for the B cell. Then come to the IgE. IgE is very important, is involved in the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Very, very, very important. This is very, 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 very important that IgE antibody is involved in the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Then IgE antibody is also helpful in defense against the helminthic infection. We, uh, You must have seen that whenever there is helminthic infection, then there is rise in the serum IgE label plus 
it also rises in the allergic conditions so that's the importance of the different types of antibodies okay so that's all for the antibody chapter next you will see the different interaction between the antigen and the antibodies please remember these factors i mean these facts all about all these antibodies these all the facts about all those antibodies that will help you if it comes in as a short note in your exams okay that's all for the antibodies